Welcome back to In the Shade. I'm Jenny Wilson and Isabel and Stella. And this is our fourth episode. Woo! Can you believe it? Number four. That's they normally amazing. say lucky number three, but I, I feel like I, I have a good feeling about lucky number four. Yeah. So we will have a quick disclaimer for you guys. We want to start by saying that we started this podcast to bring awareness for um, BIPOC. And by BIPOC people, we mean black, indigenous, and people of color that have gone missing. We also discuss BIPOC individuals that are convicted murderers as well. But mainly when we're discussing these stories slash cases, we want people to know that we want to help bring justice and awareness to BIPOC that don't appear in mainstream media. I'm ready for the intro. Yeah, thanks for that disclaimer. Yeah. So let's talk about our episode. This one is about a TikTok influencer gone mad. Ooh. So this TikTok influencer, his name is Ali Abulaban, and he's accused of murdering his estranged wife, Anna, and her friend in a jealous rage. All right, do you want to tell us who are the Abulabans? Yeah, who are the Abulabans? I'm so curious to know. Um, but lucky for you, I do know <laughs> Okay, anyways, I won't do that again. Uh, Ali is 29, born in Staten Island. His family originally migrated to uh, the U.S. from Palestine. Anna was 28 at the time of her death and was also born in Staten Island and had a fun fact and had a science degree from the Philippines, so she was super intelligent. They met in Japan on a U.S. military base about seven years ago. He was later kicked out of the military. First of all, how the fuck do you get kicked out of the military? I just... Uh, that's like really hard to do yeah that's definitely an accomplishment right there yeah they don't i mean you have to ha have done something like pretty significant you have to do some like f really like messed up shit to get like kicked out of the military that's so intense too yeah. so yeah that part is crazy ali and anna married in 2017 and had a five-year-old daughter living in a luxury condo in san diego not the daughter daughter the whole family <laughs> <laughs> They live in a nice high-rise in San Diego. They originally moved from Virginia, um, and they decided to move to San Diego in February 2021. Ali also, really interesting fact, he doesn't have a close relationship to his family, which, you know, is fair. I mean, mm -hmm. people go through shit. Yeah, but happens. I'm excited to kind of learn what was his start to fame? Like, how did he become this infamous TikToker? Yeah, so he started TikToking in Virginia, um, and his handle on TikTok was Jin Kid, and he almost has a one million followers. Almost one million, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And his whole spiel on TikTok is impersonating violent characters such as Al Pacino's Tony Montana from Scarface. So that's his like. Okay. That's his focus. All right. Okay. Um, but then aside from his like uh, TikTok, I mean like impersonations. Mm -hmm. uh, he also um, posts videos with Anna and they started like making videos of them as a couple and them oh, as a family. Okay, okay. And they would post videos uh, with captions like, when your partner is your best friend and when your relationship is drama free oh. and it'll be like them dancing. Yeah. And they even included the daughter in some videos and really like really honed in on this like perfect uh, yeah. family like dynamic ah uh, gotcha yeah so i have a question for you like yeah what's your thought on everyone looking so happy on social media and um you know should should people believe <sighs> everything that's on there okay absolutely not i feel like social media it's what you want people to see like in i when i'm like and kudos to those people that do when they're like in their deepest darkest kind of like time and like I love that transparency I yeah. personally am not going to do that but I I love when I I do see it but social media is so dangerous at the fact that like it convinces you that this is how like this individual's relationship is or like mm -hmm. this is how good this person's life is when in actuality it's just a you picture yeah, you don't know what's going on behind the camera yeah and you're just building this narrative off of a picture yeah. it's just like it's just so dangerous. But what are your thoughts on that question? Yeah, I definitely think that everything on social media should be taken with a grain of salt. Yeah, for um, sure. It's just one side of the story, really. Yeah. 
um, and it's very curated. So, you know, when you're following folks that have what seems like to be the perfect life, yeah, you know, honestly, like, don't believe it because, no. you know, everybody has problems and yeah. that's normal. That's part of life. So, um, yeah, take everything on social media with a grain of salt and don't take it too seriously. Yeah, and, like, social media, again, it's just kind of, like, it's – you're posting what you want people to see. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, like, what? We, like, post our dogs and maybe, like, uh, outside pictures or whatever, but we're, like, intentionally picking those because we feel good enough, like, okay, we can post this, but it's not, nothing's perfect, you know? Absolutely. Um, But, yeah, so how did we get from this, like, American dream to a double murder in San Diego. Do you want to know? Mm-hmm. Okay, I got you. So, when they moved to San Diego from, you know, from Virginia, um, Anna's social life kind of started flourishing. She was becoming super popular. Like, she had a, a huge, like, social scene. She was really making a name for herself, as she should, because, you know, she's kind of been in his shadow for, like, the longest time, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, Allie's cousin said something really interesting about him. Uh, do you want to know what it is? Mm-hmm. Okay, this shit is crazy. But he said he became obsessed with her, her meaning Anna, his wife, and then he wanted to control her. He couldn't grasp control over her because she had a really big social life, and he couldn't control her anymore, and it drove him mad. Ooh. Sounds like a red flag. Okay. Control freak. Control freak to the max. Conroy, a close friend of Anna for about 15 years, who was also living on the U.S. military base in Japan, said that Ali let TikTok fame get to his head, kind of became, like, pretty arrogant about it. And he started, and also he started doing cocaine, which made him a, a, a bit aggressive and jealous. Like, he, no one wanted to be around him. I mean, Anna's friends didn't want to be around him. And, because he was just kind of like a douche, you know? Mm-hmm. And this is a quote from him, or from somebody describing Ali, Okay. He's all about the high life. He wants to be on his high horse. He talks over people. He interrupts people when he walks into groups. Talks about, do you have a, do you have me on Instagram? I have a blue check on mine. Do you know who I am? Cringy. Yeah. Like, ew. It's, I can't even roll my eyes hard enough because that just sounds so annoying. Creepy. And like, also too, it's like, but... I don't care if you have a blue check mark. Yeah. You're not following. Beyonce does not follow you. So <laughs> I do not care. Neither does Rihanna. Okay. And also, too, it's kind of just like, but like. Like blue check mark. Who like, gives a shit? That's not a currency. It no. doesn't mean anything. And obviously, anybody's getting them. So like, yeah. it's no indicator of like who you are, what you're contributing to society. Exactly. It doesn't mean you're a good person. Yeah. Yeah, It just means like you're very just selfish. I don't know. Whatever. Not selfish, but you're, I don't know. What's like the word to describe it? You're just very like have a big ego. Maybe. Yeah. He has a very big ego. Yeah. Not people with blue check marks. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He has a big ego because he like thought having a blue check mark was like, meant meant, like he's better. Yeah. And he's better than people. But you want to know something even crazier? He would even carry a gun on him. He even showed the gun to his daughter and had her hold it. Remind you, she's five. She said that she has seen it and bullets around the apartment in the past. How irresponsible. Sounds like a great dad. Yeah, as like a parent, why would you have your daughter hold your pistol? For what? Like, what is that? That, like, and the fact that, like, it may have had bullets in it is so just, like, disgusting and creepy, you know? Yeah. And just terrifying. God, but anyways, I'm excited to hear what happens next. Yeah, so um, the the relationship between Anna and Ali obviously kind of went down the drain at some point when they were living in um, San Diego. So there were a few incidents of domestic violence and also indications that Ali had been cheating on his wife with other women. Oh, cringe. Yeah, so the they lived in this like luxury apartment complex mm-hmm. or condo, and the husband and wife who lived across from them, across the hallway, actually testified that about a month prior to the shooting, Anna had knocked on their door and asked them to call the police because she said that Ali and her got into a fight and mm. he hit her, Mm-mm. and then he took her phone. And then... Um, 
yeah, the police came, but he was not arrested or anything like that. Ugh. And then the police actually also said that they had been called to the Abulabans unit several times in the months leading up to the shooting. San Diego Police Detective Sergeant Christopher Leahy testified that there had been nine calls uh, for service um, to the couple's apartment between July and October when the shooting happened. That's like calling like every other week. Yeah. That's it's like insane. so frequent. But uh, Ali was never arrested in connection with any of those incidents. But obviously all of these calls and all of these incidents of domestic violence are like chipping at Anna. So Anna asked Ali to move out of their home on October 18, 2021 because she's just like fed up with him. And... He moved into a hotel. Uh, she actually planned to file a restraining order, mm. um, but uh, s- since his murder, uh, since her murder, it's unclear what the status of that was and if she actually did file it. And also, this is a really weird, creepy part. Um, when he moved out, he actually made a copy of the condo key. Oh, that's creepy. Before he, quote unquote, returned the key to her. So messed up. So sneaky. And he came by one day after she uh, had left the apartment, vandalized the apartment, and then he secretly installed Mm. like a listening app Mm. on their daughter's iPad. On the five-year-old's iPad. To spy on the wife. And he hid it like in her bedroom, (sighs) in the, the wife's bedroom. God, he's so creepy. He's so creepy. Yeah. He did an interview with Fox 5. If you guys have not seen this, we definitely recommend watching it. It is cringy, weird, bizarre, but I every time I've seen it, I couldn't bring myself to look away. Like I just yeah. wanted to keep it's watching like a train it. Wreck. Yeah, cuz it's just like a shit show from start to finish. So, again, his he did an interview with Fox 5 when he was in jail which his attorney advised against him. Sounds like a <laughs> client from hell, but that's just me. Well, he actually turned out to share two different versions of the story. So he just essentially like incriminated himself on yeah. um, like national, like I don't want to say national television, but that local like channel news yeah. or whatever, you know. So he then started uh, listening on um, October 21, 2021, and heard a man on the on the iPad uh, on the iPad yeah from the do- uh, on the daughter's the five year old daughter's iPad. That's when he Allie raced to the apartment and he heard um, or he heard on the iPad he heard R and B music being played from her bedroom. Mm-hmm. So he said, "I'm driving and I'm like, don't have sex, Anna. Don't have sex, Anna. I'm like, don't do it and I'm screaming." Once he got to, like what the fuck? Once he got to the apartment, he went upstairs used his copy of the apartment key, and he said he found his wife and her friend on the couch. Mind you, that's what he first said, okay? Mm -hmm. To see her kissing Ray on my couch with his feet on my table with my wife, my money, my apartment, my life, in the house that my daughter sleeps in, on the furniture that I put together, what do you expect a man to feel? I just hate everything. Oh, God. I mean, like... It just is cringy and creepy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it. I don't know. I feel like this was like, this interview was like a really good opportunity for him to like maybe get some empathy points. Yeah, or something. and like clear the air or something. Yeah, but he, he just sounds arrogant. He's like, my wife, my money, my apartment, my life. Yeah. The things I built. I, my, 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 uh, my. It's just so like cringy and it's yeah it's like the sense of entitlement and i'm i'm thinking that he started doing this because it was first like him in the spotlight and then anna in the background and it seemed like once anna moved to san diego kind of like met her match and you know it was becoming more popular and especially in the social life it was like he wanted her to not have those things he just it seemed like he just wanted her to just be in the shadow like fade in the background Mm -hmm. like she's been doing because everything he keeps saying like my this my that my this my that just like what yeah, not our money yeah our not, apartment and they're our married life. yeah there's no our it's just my 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 yeah. my my and it's, that's terrifying 
And remind you, that was just version one. So according to the police, Allie shot 29-year-old Rayburn Cardenas Barron three times in the head and then shot his wife in the forehead. Ice cold. Oh, my gosh. That, this man is an awful person. Allie called police around 3.10 p.m. on the day of the shooting, telling a dispatch, dispatcher that he arrived at the 35th floor high-rise apartment, luxury high-rise apartment, and found both victims dead in the living room. But remind you, didn't he say he saw to see her, like his quote again, to see her kissing Ray on my couch with his feet on my table and so on? He's saying that he saw that. Yeah, he saw them alive. Yeah, alive and like kissing on his couch, right? And like, that's what I don't get, but I'm not, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So the dispatcher asked him to remain at the scene, which makes sense, right? Because, like, why else would they not want him, you know, to wait at the scene? She said uh, he, uh, said he had to go and ended the call. There is hallway video of him leaving the apartment seconds after gunshots are heard. Other tenants have also confirmed seeing him run out of the apartment, you know, and hearing gunshots, fr- like frailing in the wind because he was just a hot mess after he mm-hmm. shot two people. And then on the Nest camera of their apartment, it actually also shows him leaving 12 seconds after the gunshots. Ugh. And on top of that, surveillance of the complex show him running away, calling his mother and confessing killing of his wife to her. The thing is, like, but they saw you. How are you, like, you can't, how can you get out of that? I don't know. And then Abulaban then went to pick up their five-year-old daughter from school, and they tried to drive somewhere, (laughs) but police stopped him on the interstate, and they still found a gun on him. Okay, do we need to talk about how this man is an awful criminal? Do we need to talk about it? Because we all know what you do with the murder weapon. You do not bring it with you. You (laughs) stash it. You hide it. You don't bring it with you. He's in San Diego. He could easily go and throw it in the ocean. We're not promoting, we're not promoting that you do things like that, but I'm just saying, he's so close, it would make sense for him to toss it in a lake or something. Or a pond. We'll take a pond. And also, he's always playing these, like, criminal characters. Yeah. So, like, you would Did think, you not watch any of the movies and right, get like, any idea of like how to do this? Like he <laughs> pretended, like he literally pretends to be people from Scarface. How does he not know like what to do? Like I don't know. He dropped the ball there. It does not. That does not make any sense. But in the Fox interview, the interviewer asked him what he was doing and mm-hmm. where he was going with her, and he claimed that he was gonna take her to a safe location at a relative's home an hour away. And then he was going to turn himself in afterwards. Why would you turn yourself in if you didn't do anything? I don't know. But then he said, I wasn't running away. I wasn't doing anything. I have nothing to hide. So what is... So first you're saying you're going to turn yourself in, but then you're saying, I wasn't doing anything. I have nothing to hide. Then why would you need to... Yeah. Right. Like that... You see, like none of that makes any sense, honestly. So then the second version of his murder surfaced. Um... He said that he found his wife and friend dead and was the one who reported his wife and Barron's death and insists he has nothing to hide. And at the time of the interview, the interviewer asked um, why prosecutors are claiming he confessed. And he says he doesn't know and he denies confessing. You didn't know it's on surveillance. It's literally on surveillance. Like, I don't know. This guy is crazy. So he officially pleaded not guilty to the two first-degree murder charges against him, and he's facing the possibility of 25 years to life in prison if he's convicted. Lock that man up. Yeah, so since he said Mm -mm. he was going to bring his child to a safe location, do you think he was a heartbroken father and husband or self-obsessed? I feel like self-obsessed because, like, Even when he stated above, um, like a little while back, that quote when he was like, my apartment, my life, and the house that my daughter sleeps in, a lot of it's just like him, 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 him. It doesn't seem like he had any concern 
for himself or really his daughter. I mean, to be honest with you, I feel like he probably picked up the daughter and was going to run to a relative's house to, like, hide, you know, maybe yeah. drop her off and then maybe stay there. I'm not too sure. But it, it, he didn't have her in mind. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, he really didn't. What are your thoughts on that? I definitely don't think he was a heartbroken father at all. I no. mean, I, I would hope that a father who loves his child wouldn't ever want to kill the child's mother regardless of their relationship. Yeah. Like, even no matter how much you hate your wife or your ex-wife, like, mm-hmm. you just... If you love your child, you would never take your child's parent. No, we never like you never choose. Yeah, so he, I don't, I don't think he thought about anyone other than himself. Yeah, he's like, oh well, this is what I mean. Even when he was talking about, um, like a bu- uh, like when we were talking about earlier about when um he heard R and B music coming from Anna's room, he was just like, Anna, don't do it, don't have sex. But why? You're having sex with other women. Yeah. You're cheating. You've been cheating on her. She's finally like put her foot down and said, get out. He goes to a hotel, but it's like she he's just very self-absorbed. Yeah. But the interesting part is in the Fox 5 interview, he spoke about missing doing TikToks. <laughs> he says, it's my life. It's my baby. Gee, are you OK? Because you have a legit kid that is five years you old. You have a baby. Yeah, that walks, talks and like shits like because it's an actual child. TikTok is temporary. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, a career. It's not your life. No. It's not your baby. No. It was just, and then it's like, on top of that, it's like, you can't, like, that statement we can't even feel bad for because yeah. he intentionally took that, his TikTok career away from himself by killing his partner yeah. that he's doing TikToks with. He's mourning his, like, the loss of his, quote, like, the loss of his career more than the loss of his wife or his child just being yeah. all alone now. Yeah, and that's the part to me that is so crazy. I'm just like, what the, whatever. So, <laughs> he said he was close to making it to Hollywood. This close. The, <laughs> this close. The weekend before he was at an event, so the weekend before he killed his wife and her boo or friend or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. Doesn't like they never. They didn't need to die at all. Mm-hmm. The weekend before, he was <laughs> at an event and almost signed with a talent agent. My goal was to become an actor. First of all, gee, you're already locked up and probably not getting out for two first degree murders. Mm-hmm. Second of all, tell people that you got a t- talent agent. Tell them mm-hmm. you were an extra in a movie because after all, doing all of that, you <laughs> we need like we need something. But don't j- like. I don't know. He's pathetic. He just, the fact that he's crying over his career being dead before it even started more than his child not having parents is is just disgusting. It's so disgusting. So, so disgusting. When talking about his actions, he spoke um, about how his goal was to just Try to get a hold of my family. His family meaning like his nuclear family that he created with Anna. So Anna himself and their five-year-old daughter. It was slipping through my fingers. I'm the loser here and I lost. He said that people told him to leave her because, get a kick out of it, <laughs> wait, wait for this. Because he could get any model because he's so famous and handsome. And he acknowledged it saying, yes, he could, but he didn't want to. Because he wanted his wife. <sighs> he sounds like such an airhead. Like, it, is it weird that I feel uncomfortable reading that quote? Like, it's so just yeah, like, it's just douchey. So douchey, and Ugh. he's like kind of throwing a bone at his dead wife. Yeah. Uh, but like, it's like it's not a compliment to her to be like. Yeah, I could get any model because I'm famous and I'm handsome, but I didn't go for them because I just wanted and settled for my wife. Yeah. Like, like why did he need to say the model thing about him being famous and handsome? I didn't, I don't, it's just like tacky from start to finish. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, he's like, um, He's like patting himself on the back yeah. for actually like 
lifting up his wife. Yeah, which is like when you marry someone, that's like your partner in crime. Like even if you're not married to someone, whoever you're dating, that's like your partner in crime, like your best friend, like you want to uplift them. But he takes like he doesn't get it. Yeah, he's, he's like, uplifting himself. He's first. uplifting himself and then talking shit about his dead wife. Yeah. So anyways, the reporter asked him, could anyone else have Anna? He responded, not while she's married to me. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Ugh. Red flag. So how, many red flags. How cringy is that? What happens next, though? I got to know. Yeah, so he could face the death penalty if he's convicted um, and prosecutors choose to pursue capital punishment. He remains in custody without bail because obviously he's considered <laughs> flight risk. He might, yeah, he already tried to bounce. <laughs> He already had his preliminary preliminary hearing Mm -hmm. in late January 2022, um, and he had multiple outbursts during the hearing. We'll be (sighs) linking those two. So cringe. But these outbursts are pretty intense. But it's just another highlight of him, another like way of highlighting how like self observed obsessed he is yes so during the preliminary hearing a detective was questioned about his experience uh and about him experiencing a traumatic event meaning seeing Mm. his dead wife and maybe that's why he fled the scene Mm. but then the detective responded yeah he created one yeah which really triggered an outburst in ali and he like started screaming in court Crazy. and he was like, I created one. Who the fuck are you? Do you think I wanted this? Uh, My life is destroyed. My career is destroyed. Like, oh my gosh. The fact that he's again, just thinking about himself. My life is destroyed. Yeah. My career is dead. Like, your kid's life is destroyed. Your child does and, not have a mom and, and it's all wife, because of you life your wife's life is over yeah like she's not she's never coming back because you killed her yeah but he's again just thinking about my life my career and it's just so (sighs) disturbing it's so cringy it's so just like what Um, are you doing but yeah the judge cleared the court and threatened to have him watch and attend the proceedings remotely if he didn't compose himself (laughs) and the jury for uh, the jury trial is now scheduled for the end of September 2022. So we'll definitely be keeping y'all updated on that. Yeah. <laughs> so since this is ongoing, we will also keep um, an eye out for this and we'll probably give you an update as soon as we find more information. And definitely. Hopefully he just gets um, the punishment that he deserves. I hope he keeps having these tangents and rages during his case because... This shit, he is going to be entertaining for me. Yeah. Like, a, a plus drama. A plus drama coming yeah. from Ali. So, question for you. Yeah. Do you think this was a crime of passion because he loved his wife so mm-hmm. much? Or jealous rage? Or do you think it was more narcissism? I want to say narcissism because he. You can be a narcissist and also be passionate and jealous. So, because those, are, I feel like those are different like tiers. Um, well, you know, anyone can have those, but with a narcissist, they're so strategic. And I feel like being like passion and jealousy are like tiers under narcissism. It's almost like you don't want anyone to be as happy as you are or to thrive as well as you are. So you're willing to do whatever it is. To keep, to keep them down so to, and continue to remind them that they're up here and like you're down here but what are your thoughts do you think that he was a narcissist or do you think oh, it was 100 right okay yeah, absolutely um yeah and i guess that's that for our fourth episode yeah fourth episode thank you guys so much for listening to our fourth episode as we said before, we will keep you guys updated on this case. We de- Again, we definitely think it's going to be like A-plus drama because this guy is a shit show. But, yeah, I can't believe it's episode number four. Don't, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. And we're also on um, Apple Podcasts, Google, and Spotify Podcasts as well. Um, but yeah, we're excited that you guys listen to us and 
are celebrating our fourth episode. This is really awesome. And as always, this is In the Shade. I'm Jenny Wilson and, and Isabel Ancella. And thank you guys for listening. <laughs>